going on everyone welcome back to the channel my name is jason you're watching backtrack cinema and welcome to my 31 days of horror and today i'm going to go through my favorite horror movie every year that i've been alive and that's 45 bloody movies man so i'm going to show as much physical media as possible and the one movies i don't own or couldn't find because i have so bloody much of it i'll um i'll put a poster up for you guys so Comment down below what are some of your favorite horror films and do you like these horror films? I'm going to show the end of this video and like, comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel. So at 1979, we got the classic Alien. Great film, man. This is the 4K edition. It's still in the wrapper. I still haven't watched this yet. People tell me it is a pretty awesome transfer. And man, just spawned Ripley. It's such a cool creature design. It's such a atmospheric horror film in space man awesome coming at 1980 is the film maniac i actually love maniac i came to this movie within a year a year and a half ago or something like that i love this film this took over friday the 13th spot i wish i had a copy to show you but i do not own maniac i'm finding it really hard to find actually but what an awesome psychological tale with all about this killer you know I mean, who has some serious mommy issues and that end the end of the film is completely macabre, dark, macabre, the way all his victims in his own mind are coming at him and tearing his flesh away. It's it's fantastic. At 1981, we got Friday the 13th, part two, Sackhead Jason, my boy, tearing it up at Crystal Lake, getting revenge from everyone. Uh, definitely um, an upgrade in characters with Ginny and the final girl and everything like that. So Friday the 13th, part two, for sure. 1982, we got The Thing. The Thing is awesome. Whatever I, what format I watch this on, VHS, DVD, 4K, it's always awesome. This is my Blu-ray copy of The Thing. Kurt Russell's awesome. This movie, John Carpenter directing his ass off. Just fantastic film. Practical effects coming out your ass. And, and just the breadcrumbs he leaves everywhere of who's The Thing, creating that paranoia and great score. In 1983, we have psycho 2 just a fantastic film man i love norman bates in this and i love what tom holland did in the writing for this it, it's just amazing it's such a well-crafted story still atmospheric and surprised the hell out of everyone right when this come out i'm sure and my favorite horror poster of all time just look at that man it's just awesome there you go psycho 2 at 1984 is the classic nightmare on elm street just look at that poster man freddy is awesome as hell in this movie there he is on fire amazing a nightmare on elm street is absolutely amazing freddy krueger you know he kills tina coming out and, you know and he goes this is god it's just an absolutely incredible scene so many scary moments in this movie man it is a scary film um and i still think it is pretty scary it, it even to today's standards, it's just an awesome film, man. Coming out in 1985 is my favorite werewolf movie, and that is Silver Bullet. Gary Busey is awesome in this. This has a real heart to it with this town and this brother and sister and the relationship with their uncle and everything like that. And the werewolf stuff, almost slasher-like, where the werewolf is taking everybody out, everyone out. You know what I mean? This is the Shout Factor release. I'm sure you guys all have this silver bullet and i know the werewolf ain't great but it's a great movie coming at 1986 is jason lives this is my favorite friday the 13th movie absolutely love it look at that 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 bloody poster there man that jacket jason lives the tombstone i would love to have that down here you know i might have to do a diy project one day but uh fantastic man this is part of the big friday the 13th shout factory scream factory whatever you call it release just just pretty amazing man right tommy jarvis digging up jason from the grave stay tuned coming out in 1987 is dream warriors that is such a fantastic movie nightmare on elm street part three the uncontrollable evil freddy krueger returns to spice up the dreams of fresh victims and the spectacular new shocker from the original nightmare creator wes craven amazing film man show you the back there oh look at him standing there this frightening man terrifying awesome at 1988 i originally had child's play 
And then I was going through my collection. It's got to be the freaking blob, doesn't it? The blob is awesome. I love the blob. Um, what a great one-two punch. You know, the thing and then the blob. You know what I mean? That'd be a great one-two uh, special feature for sure. I love this movie, man. It's the same guy who did Dream Warriors does the blob. And if you like Stranger Things, you you know, if any younger people who follow me, you like Stranger Things and that vibe, watch The Blob, man. Not only does it have a Stephen King vibe, it has a real, you know, that kind of uh, Stranger Things vibe. But Stranger Things going after the 80s feel, and this is 1988. So, yeah. You know, a great B movie with an A-pick budget. Great way of uh, describing it. And at 1989 is Pet Cemetery. Fantastic film, man. Really great film. I mean, um, what's her name? Zelda is scary as hell in it. There's a lot of scary imagery. But you watch this as a parent years later, it's it really is terrifying, man. I mean, Gage scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. But that whole idea, how they get your it get into the the psychological thing as a parent with you with you not being able to save your kid from runs out on the road, scary shit, man. And where he's holding him by the cemetery when he's dead. Yeah, just, you know, just not being able to let go, doing anything you can to preserve your, to have your, your kid back and your loved ones. Just Pet Cemetery is awesome. Coming in at 1990 is Misery, guys. And I love that cover of, of this Blu-ray. That's just amazing. Annie Wilkes just tearing shit up in this. She's psychotic as hell. Misery, I just love this movie, man. This movie's... My kind of movie, you know what I mean? That, that you know, building the suspense, building the tension. Performance by Kathy Bates in this is incredible. This When she starts getting really freaking unhinged, this is, almost, this is almost the perfect movie, man. I just love all the characters. Everything about it, I absolutely love. Coming in at 1991 is Silence of the Lambs, an Oscar winner movie. Jodie Foster's awesome. Anthony Hopkins is awesome in this movie. He is terrifying. The facial expressions on his performance and everything like that. This is just an amazing movie. The Silence of the Lambs. You know what I mean? Just a great actor's movie, dialogue movie. And I'm hearing that um, if you like this, you'll love Long Legs. I haven't seen Long Legs yet, but hopefully I won't be disappointed in that. Coming out in 1992 is Candyman. This is kind of like a fantasy folklore, a horror film. Deals with a lot of racial tensions, has something to say. I love Tony Todd and Virginia Madison in this movie. Tony Todd's voice and everything is like, hell, and... And it's based on this local legend of the Candyman. You go into the mirror and go, Candyman, 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 and he'll appear. And it's got some pretty brutal kills in it. And I love how this ends with Helen becoming the new kind of Candyman. Now she has... She's a legend, and she's going to grow and grow and grow and terrify people. Awesome. Wish they would have done a sequel with her as the, the new kind of candy man, though. Or candy girl, whatever you have it. Coming in for 1993 is Fire in the Sky. This is a slow burn, atmospheric kind of alien kind of movie where a bunch of loggers, they're cut, you know, it's late at night and a spacecraft comes and takes one of them away and he doesn't appear back till seven days later or something like that. But the movie's really about when he's gone. You know what the town goes through and these these loggers get all accused of killing him and all that kind of stuff. James Gardner's in it. He's really good in this film. Robert Patrick. Awesome in this film. Gives a really great performance. And it's all atmosphere. When they when you see what happened to Travis Walton inside the spacecraft and you know, they're experimenting on him. It's all atmosphere and it's dark. And when I watched this in 1993 in a cold in the cinema and it just gave that feeling of coldness and man it was it's a great movie it really is coming out 1994 is west craven's new nightmare this is you know a real meta approach you know what i mean where where heather langekin's playing herself john saxon's playing herself west craven plays herself all about this demon who's masking himself as freddy krueger west craven returns to his new classic horror premise and takes it into a new dimension absolutely Fantastic film, new nightmare. And Freddy looks awesome there, doesn't he? Coming at 1995 is Seven. Seven's just a classic crime thriller. David Fincher. Uh, production design's awesome. Performances are awesome. And I really like just the atmosphere of this of this film. 
and that ending, you know what I mean? What's in the box ending? Oh, man, just gut punch every time. Coming at 1996 is Scream. Now, the 90s wasn't terribly great for me for horror films. And I'm not terribly over the moon on this this movie, but it is cleverly written. I will say that I do like the first Scream movie. Like I don't over I'm not over the moon about it. It's not perfect or anything like that, but I could still have a good time with the the first movie and that original and that opening. That opening is classic and really does stand the test of time. So Scream. Coming out in 1997 is an anthology film called Campfire Tales that not many people talk about, and I've always liked it. It's three tales. You know, they're all sitting around the campfire and there's three different little horror stories. One deals with the legend of the hook man. A second one deals with a child being lured by the internet and this creep gets into her home. And the third story is just a classic ghost story. So definitely check out Campfire Tales. Coming in 1998 is my boy Blade. Love Wesley Snipes in this. This is just a great vampire flick. And, you know, Blade is awesome. That opening scene, he's this fucking everyone up, man. These vampires are getting killed left, right, and center. And I just really love the, the charisma of Leslie Snipes in this. It's kind of a darker movie. I love the cinematography in it. And, you know, the mythology is all really good and everything. So really love Blade. And to end the 90s, 1999 is The Sixth Sense. I really love this movie. This movie is just killer, man. What a great ghost story. Yes, I know watching it now, you you know, we know the ending. But it's still a nice journey to go on to. Great performances by Bruce Willis, Tony Collette, Haley Joel Osment. I mean, The Sixth Sense really put M. Night Shyam on the map. You know what I mean? And it became his reputation was famous for twist endings. You know what I mean? So, but The Sixth Sense is always great. Coming at 2000 is What Lies Beneath. I love this movie. This is Hitchcockian experience with Harrison Ford, Michelle Pfeiffer, two stars playing up in the horror genre. And Harrison Ford is performance in this man. It's such a daring performance at, at the time. And he's just so sinister seeing Harrison Ford play a sinister character. And I just love the slow build of it all. The tension, great ghost story. And that's double meaning of what lies beneath the water, but what lies beneath a marriage, our lives, something sinister going on when everything looks hunky dory. You know what I mean? Love what lies beneath. 2001 is The Others. I love The Others. Just a great atmospheric ghost story. Nicole Kidman is fantastic in this. Just the lighting, the cinematography. Beautiful film. Just, and again, another slow burn, tension-filled experience. Coming at 2002 is The Ring. Ah, see what I mean? I love films like this, man. 2000s was hitting it out of the park, man, with their horror. I mean, The Ring is awesome. Naomi Watts has got a got a, a great performance in this and Samara coming out of the well at the end through the TV. That's just iconic and scary as hell. The opening is creepy as hell. The scariest movie of the year. You know what I mean? Um, Just awesome. So good. It's scary. Just an awesome film, man. Love the ring. At 2003, we got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The remake. They tried to terrify us once again, and it, it's a good film. I don't like it as much as the original. There's spots in it. And that looking at it now, it, it kind of drags a bit, but I like Jessica Biel in it. I like the characters in it. Arlie Ermey's is stealing the show in this movie as the sheriff. He's actually more terrifying than Leatherface, man. At 2004 is the remake to Dawn of the Dead. with Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead here. Seeing the zombies running and they're ferocious, they're vicious. It, this created high levels of tension in this and you know same beats as the original dawn of the dead but i think it's just a quicker pace for everyone you know what i mean and i think people um with a lot of remakes or reimaginings this one was just great man i love dawn of the dead my favorite exorcism movie from 2005 the exorcism of emily rose i love this film this has so much tension and at one time it was the scariest film i've ever seen you know what I mean? It, this is a, a, a great film. It's not for everyone, but I love that, man. And doing that whole courtroom battle thing mixed with an exorcist kind of style film was a great choice. So I love this movie. 2006, we got the remake to The Hills Have Eyes. The Hills Have Eyes is the unrated version. I love this. I like this more than the original. This is just a great remake. 
And that scene where they come into the trailer and they kill everyone and they, they're burning the father at the stake there, that was just built up. That was tension, really great tension, you know what I mean? And really visceral violence, you know, at least for its time anyway. So I love The Hills Have Eyes. Coming out 2007 is Paranormal Activity, and that's the first one. What a relentless white knuckled tension experience man right from the beginning to the end that ending well this maybe the scariest moment for me of all time you know where she kills her husband and you're just hearing everything you're not seeing it right that's what makes it scary using theater of the mind using suggestion really getting inside here with this film and it's just great i think the husband's a douchebag in it but i i like our main final girl or our, what the the one the demon's attacking who's latched on to her. Uh, so I love Paranormal Activity. At 2008, we have Let the Right One In. Great little vampire film. I like the remake as well, Let Me In. They play a little different, but they're pretty much following the same beats. That ending is so memorable in the swimming pool where you see this body parts being you know dropped into the swimming pool and you realize that this vampire girl has fucked up all these bullies, man. So yeah, Let the Right One In is pretty awesome. Coming out 2009 is Ty West's House of the Devil. I love this movie. This is a, you know, what a throwback to the 70s, 80s, but really slow burn. I mean, this is slow, slow, slow burn gold, man. And I I just love our main character here. The way they he builds the tension through the house by showing her all alone. She's just supposed to be sitting for an elderly person. But she doesn't really know what's going on, that there's some serious uh, worshiping and witchcraft and devil stuff going on. And it doesn't end well for her. But when she's just sitting there dancing around the house and they slowly build the tension, like you, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. But he he holds off on it for so long. So I always love that. Coming at 2010 is Insidious. Really love this film. This is a different approach with James Wan a bit. It's not. It's different than The Conjuring that he did later. This is he makes something called The Nether where this boy is, you know, essentially left his has an out of body experience. He's left his body and he's traveled into the across the spirit world and everything. So that's kind of a cool idea and his father's got to go in and bring him back. We all remember the, you know, the red demon guy, he's pretty terrifying. And I like the how the way they use the music with screeches and strings and it's it's a definitely a terrifying tension filled experience. At 2011, we have Your Next. This is a great little home invasion slasher with one of the best final girls you'll see because she's a badass man. I think the actress's name is Sharni Vincent or something like that. Uh, but she's awesome in this, where she says she just takes care of business at the end of this movie and throughout this movie. And you got iconic horror legend Barbara Crampton in here as well if you haven't seen this one definitely check this out 2012 we got sinister this is definitely my favorite movie of that year this is a tension-filled experience too where ethan hawk is this crime writer and he moves into this house where the occupants were murdered and a child disappeared and he's trying to find inspiration for his new book and uh shit goes downhill fast and the lawnmower scene i think we all remember 2013 we got the conjuring just james wan hitting it out of the park again that real 70s slow burn tension suspense this is based on ed and lorraine warren or a demonologist demon hunter kind of thing and man this movie has some scares in it man and you know definitely one of the scariest movies i've seen 2014 is starry eyes i mean a lot of people have never seen this movie or heard of it this is a great psychological thriller horror movie that has the body horror like The Fly, but it's also got some Rosemary Baby kind of feel to it. And so if you like those two movies, you're going to like this. If David Lynch and David Cronenberg came together to craft a gory psychological mind bender, it might be Starry Eyes. There you go. That's what I'm talking about here, man. Leading Lady Alex Esso is an absolute revelation. And Alex Esso is awesome in this movie. The transformation she takes in this movie is based around, you know, this actress and what she'll do, you know, to get her stardom and the sacrifice that takes place is you got to watch Starry Eyes. You got to watch it. Coming out 2015, we got Final Girl, a complete tribute to the 80s slasher genre and more so the camp genre. But there's actually a real good heart to the movie, too, between the mother and daughter in this movie. And I 
The Final Girls is great. Very meta, winking at the audience, but it's awesome. Coming out 2016 is The Conjuring 2. Now, I actually prefer this over The Conjuring. I've grown to like this movie more. I love the English setting, and I love the um, the characters more. It's another horror film that's a love story masked as a horror film about Ed and Lorraine Warren going, you know, you see them at the enemy, the enemy Villa house at the beginning, then they fly off to the London, England or somewhere in, in England. And I just love the atmosphere and the feel of everything. The setting, right, is great. And this is where we're introduced to the nun and she's terrified. Coming in for 2017 is Gerald's game. Mike Flanagan knocking out of the park with him and Stephen King teaming up. An awesome film about trauma and getting over the trauma where this couple has a romantic getaway and he handcuffs her up for some kinky play and he ends up having a heart attack gerald has a heart attack and she's stuck with these handcuffs she starts relapsing into her own psyche dealing with her past trauma and it you know it doesn't pull any any punches man it goes for it and the degloving scene with the handcuffs how she gets out of there meanwhile a seal killer has been roaming the area and so sometimes you don't know what's real and what's not real so it's all done through this character of Jesse. It's awesome. Gerald's game's amazing. Coming out 2018 is A Quiet Place. I love Emily Blunt in this and John Kranansky. He directed it and, you know, husband and wife team in real life. Just love the characters in this. Um, I love it's a creature feature and it's got a lot of atmosphere in it. And I love the creatures in this, even though the CGI, you, it, you know, it shows its ugly head. Some of the CGI here and there, but for the most part, he keeps them in the dark and everything like that. And I do like the concept of, you know, how they, they hunt by sound. And you can't make any sound and what you can do with that in a horror film. So it spawned a franchise, man. So a quiet place. 2019, we got Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep's awesome. Again, another Flanagan film, really knocking it out of the park. Who would have thought you could uh, make a sequel to The Shining and be this good? I actually prefer this over The Shining. This is Stephen King approved. And, you know, just I, I love how he recreated the Overlook Hotel and all those kind of scenes in there. And where you see where Jack put the uh, put the axe in the in the door and everything is this great. This is a great film and it has some pretty horrific imagery. Rebecca Ferguson as Rose the Hat in here. She's just absolutely astonishing. She's terrific in this film. Menacing, sinister. But, I mean, so good to look at at the same time. <laughs> Coming out 2020 is Possessor. This is a nice little sci-fi thriller horror film that has some good things about it, man. I Brandon Cronenberg, David Cronenberg's son, using this, um like, brain implants and that kind of technology where these assassins take over other people's body to get their targets and everything like that. And things get out of hand pretty fast for this, for this one woman. And it's a very interesting movie, so I recommend all of you watch Possessor. Coming out 2021 is Army of the Dead, Zack Snyder's uh, zombie film. This was a whole lot of fun. It was just a fun movie. I really enjoyed the zombies in it. The heist feel to the whole movie felt very big blockbuster-like, almost action movie-like. And I just love how there was like a king zombie and a queen zombie and the way... He got he directed the zombies the way they acted and everything I thought was great. So th don't pass up on Army of the Dead. I thought it's a great time. It's entertaining as hell. 2022, we got Terrifier 2. Now, I wasn't big on Terrifier 1, but I did like this movie. Not so much for the gore and all that. Art the Clown's great in it, but it was Sienna Shaw. It was our final girl. I love the fantasy approach he took, the fantasy angle to horror about the final girl and the evil, the good versus evil, you know, your killer versus your final girl, but done in a very like fantasy way. A even the symbolism of her get up. She looks like she's freaking wonder woman and she's got to get this. She has a sword and everything. I love that whole approach to it. And he puts her through the ringer. She takes abuse, man. So I like it for different reasons. Not just cause it's a gory slasher film. You know what I mean? But because they did something a little different with it and it and did some um, lore building mythology and stuff like that. I haven't seen the third one yet, but yeah, so Terrifier 2. Coming out 2023 is Evil Dead Rise. I love what they did with Evil Dead in this. I thought that our main lead here with the mom, he turns into one of the Deadites. She was just awesome. She has all those facial features 
You know what I mean? Um, I've only seen this movie once, but I like the how the two sisters, you know, they flesh out the characters first, make you care. But having it in the apartment building was a great idea and everything like that. And the way the movie opens, you know, with the dead, I, you know, this rising evil dead rise and it says evil dead rise. That was a great opening. And coming out 2024. Now, I haven't seen a lot of movies for horror films in 2024, but I'm going with the first Omen, the prequel to the Omen. I thought it was a great flick. I thought the performance here was absolutely terrific by our main lead here. Sorry, I forget the names, forgetting her name now, but man, she was good in this movie as this nun. And, you know, and you they they it's a prequel to the Omen. So they show you like basically the mother who gives birth to Damien. I thought the jump scares and the scares really worked. There was some really good um, direction here from our director. And there's one scene where where the baby is filling up in her womb. And it's almost like a possession scene. Fantastic performance here. The physical performance she does here our main lead here and the way she's this, her bones are cracking and she's just convulsing and everything. It's like, just fantastic, man. Some really good lighting in the film, like the, like right at the end. And they do something in this movie, spoiler alert, where when after Damien's born and everything, but Damien also has a sister that they add into this that we never knew about. And it's almost like, they could do more movies now, and maybe these two are like the good versus evil final showdown. If they were doing a trilogy or something like that, I'd be interested in seeing for sure. So that is my list for every horror film, but I've been alive. But what about you guys? Give me your list down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share the video around, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. And we'll have a great discussion about all these horror films and so many other horror films for sure. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I got a video for you to click on right below me there. So definitely check out that video. Go down the rabbit hole. Check out all the other videos. And keep watching Backtrack Cinema, man. So I'll see you next time, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.